Thank you, John and Helen. Last week we talked about love languages and today we're delving into relationship make or break issues. Lare Olushola, popularly known as the catalyst, needs little introduction because he pioneered life coaching in Nigeria and made it a discipline that has become widely accepted as a mandatory requirement for personal self-development and growth, as well as organizational manpower resource building. With over two decades of coaching under his belt and numerous Nigerian and international individuals and organizations as clients, his academy, the Olushola Lanri Coaching Academy, a mind, emotions, and behavioral change academy has not only changed lives and businesses, but has also turned previously coached individuals into coaches. And that, to me, is what I call paying it forward and mentorship. Welcome, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for joining us today. No, no, it's mine. Awesome. So, let's delve right into it. Today we're talking about love and respect. I was actually going to quote the Bible <laughs> <laughs> because in um, my Bible scripture is not great, but I think it's Ephesians 5.33. It says, husbands, love your wives as you love yourselves and wives respect your husbands. How important is love and respect? Well, you know, I mean, leaning back into where you started off, which is scriptures, right? Mm -hmm. You know, they went to meet um, Jesus and asked him, which is the greatest commandment, mm -hmm. right? So Moses gave us 10, <coughs> excuse me. And then they were trying to trap Jesus. And they said, which of those 10 are the greatest commandments? Guess what he says? He says love. Love. And then he broke love down into three dimensions. It says, love the Lord your God with the entirety of your being. Mm. And then love yourself. And then love your neighbor. Mm. So love is expressed in three dimensions. One is you have a personal and intimate relationship with the one who is love. Mm -hmm. And learn love from him. Mm -hmm. You know, receive love from him. And then with that, love yourself. <clears throat> Accept yourself. And then when you understand that, then you can give it to other people. Mm. So that's the greatest commandment. But, mm. you know, when we talk about respect, right, everybody wants to be accepted. Everyone wants to be regarded. Everybody has needs. Everybody has wants. Everyone has beliefs, values. Um, they see the world from their own perspective or from their own lenses. Mm -hmm. And people, you know, deserve to be accepted they deserve to be, you know, honored for who they are, for, for the gift that they are to the world. And those two things, they work together, right? If I truly love you, I would accept you for who you are, right? I would, I would regard your needs. I would regard your wants. I would regard you for your beliefs and your values. I would honor that. They may not be mine, mm. but I have to respect you for that. And that is one of the greatest elements of love. But we feel that love is a feeling that we have never felt before. That giz giz thing, right? Mm. Love can be expressed as a feeling, but love is not a feeling. Love is a dedicated, affectionate commitment, right, to someone's well-being. Love is accepting people for what and who they are. Love is believing the best in everyone, being patient to help people evolve to be their best, supporting people to live their dreams and fulfill their purpose, right? That is the essence of the fact that it's not good for each one of us to exist in isolation. We need one another, hmm. right? You know, the construct of love, respect, and needs, right, is another matter because I can tell you I love you but it's difficult for me to say and accept that I need you. And sure. until, until we get to the place where we understand that we're all human beings with needs and wants, right? With mm -hmm. pain points and we need each other mm -hmm. for each of our needs, wants, and, and pain to be alleviated, right? Mm -hmm. We will not 
be loving and respecting each other as is required. Okay. That is a lot mm. that you've packed in there. But I want to, I want to drill deep. Yeah. Respect. And I want to even take it back to scripture. Mm -hmm. God did not say, husband, respect your wife. He said, husband, love your wife. Um, wife, respect your husband. So you've just broken down respect into regard, acceptance, honor. Mm -hmm. I want to understand that word respect a bit more, especially as it relates to men versus women, because I genuinely believe that what a man sees as respect is not necessarily what a woman sees as respect. Yes, and even what one woman sees as respect is different from what another woman sees as respect, mm. right? So if we looked at, if we went back to the definition of respect, it is, right, I'm giving regard to you for your needs, your wants, your beliefs, your values. Mm. So if I'm married to you mm. and I truly want to respect you, first thing that I need to do is to know what your needs are is to know what is important to you, is to know what your values and your core ideology or perception to life is, is to know what you want, mm. right? Mm. And if I truly do respect you, mm. right, it is to listen to those things that matter to you and, you know, to give it to you as your husband, mm. right? So that shows that I truly respect you. Now, for you, your values may be different from another person's wife's values. Your needs and your wants will be different from another person's wife's needs and wants. Mm -hmm. Where you're going in life, your life purpose may be different. And so the kind of support that you need, right, may be completely different. And so, yes, I like the concept of saying that, yeah, women um, receive respect or define respect differently from men. Mm -hmm. There is a truth in that, mm -hmm. right? But it, there is also a truth in the fact that how you want to be respected is different from how another woman wants to be respected. And so if I am married to you, mm -hmm. right, the onus lies on me to find out how you want to be respected and what respect means to you. And that's what we should be talking about when we're courting. When we are dating, those are the yeah. things that we need to find out, right? Yeah. And the reason why you are married, mm -hmm. right, is so that I exclusively, right, I'm the one that ensures that all of these things that you need, all of these things that you want, mm -hmm. right, I give it to you. And the same for the husband as well. Yeah, so when we talk about love now, right? You know, the Bible says, husbands, love your wife. Like sorry, sorry I, I just want to interrupt you quickly. I'm going to caveat this to our viewers. It is relationships. So relationships is not necessarily husband and wife. It can be a courtship. It can be dating. As far as there are two people in a romantic relationship, those are the things we're talking about. The same rules apply. All right, so speaking about husband and wife, right, and, 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 and the scripture that you quoted, husband, love your wife like Christ loved the church and yes. gave of himself, Yes. right? So a man, how did Christ love the church, right? Selflessly. He was selfless. Yes. Um, he gave his life. Yes. He taught. Yes. He, he lived by example. Yes. He was a role model, right? Um, and, and the husband is required to be that, right? Those to, are tall orders, though. Yeah. So For human beings, those are tall orders. So what we're talking about with those two scriptures is, mm -hmm. is both people are supposed to be submissive to one another. <laughs> both people are supposed to live selfless lives. So I come into that marriage, right, mm. right to give you what you need. Mm. You come into that marriage to give me what I need. And that you know, is what completes us. That yeah. is what makes our marriage, mm. right, what it's supposed to be. 
why is it then hard sometimes for men to love and respect their women in a way that the woman understands and vice versa for men. So why is it, why is it difficult sometimes for the opposite sex to love and respect each other in a manner that they understand? All right, this success, you know, um, has formulas and principles. Mm -hmm. So successful marriage, right, also require that you know the principles that make it successful. And, you know, we're talking about the foundational principles, mm -hmm. right? But if you do not understand what those principles are, that's the first thing. If you do not accept what those principles are, that's the second thing. The third thing is, for men, their ego gets in the way. Mm. For women, right, a lot of times, right, women want what they want. When they want it. When they want it, how they, they want, want it. it. Yes. But you, if you recall, I did say that you're in that marriage, not for you. You're in that marriage for your husband. And your husband is supposed to be in that marriage for you. Right. So it's about mutual selflessness. <laughs> so you're not in there to demand. You're in there to give. You're, you're supposed to be a gift. And a gift is something that you freely give, right? But how many of us choose gifts that, you know, people actually need and want? So if, if I sell shoes, hmm. my default would be to always give shoes. Because yes. really and truly, it really doesn't It's easy. Me. Yeah, it's it's easy, convenient. Right? If my love language or my appreciation language is words of affirmation, yes. right, my default will always be to speak words of affirmation to you. Yes. How many times do we really truly sit down and ask ourselves, what does Ferran really need? Hmm. Right? What is her love language? Hmm. What is her respect and appreciation language? If it is words of affirmation, then I have to refrain myself when I'm angry. Right? I can't lash out. I can't say the kind of words that I would normally say because I know that words hurt you more. I see. So I've got to braid on my tongue mm. because if I say something, right, it runs deep. And so, look, marriage is the only institution that before you get into school, you are given the degree. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then yeah. you can fail, it, fail at it. Yes. One in two marriages globally is ending up in divorce. First time marriages, right? 63% of second time marriages is ending up in divorce. 72% of third time marriages is ending up in divorce. So it's going up. It's yeah. going, because you are not learning the mistakes you made in your first time marriage, married failure, right? Yeah. You are still running your failure model. A lot of people are destroying their marriages simply because they are ignorant about the principles that make it succeed. They are unwilling to make the sacrifices that are required. Marriage is hard work. Hmm. It's hard work. Marriage <laughs> is, is almost like you are dying every day, right? You are dying to self. You're dying to self. I hear that a lot. And, and, and yeah. marriage, successful marriage is built on some fundamental pillars. Friendship, mm -hmm. right? Forgiveness, maturity and emotional intelligence, kindness. Mm -hmm. Those are critical foundations that successful marriages are built on. And if you do not invest in those things, mm -hmm. right? you will not benefit from them. Hmm. And so a lot of us place emphasis on many things. Oh, I'll give you gifts. Oh, it's your birthday. But what are the critical things that you should be doing to ensure that these things succeed? It's hard work and people, you know, they're too busy. You know, I have to provide. 
I have to take care of the kids. Oh, we have to buy diesel. So, you know, um, they're focusing on things that are needful, mm -hmm. but also, you know, you didn't get into the marriage because of those things. You got into the marriage for companionship. You got into the marriage for love. You got into the marriage for intimacy, for relationships, right? Yeah. Long term. Yeah. Now, if you don't do the needful now, right, you can't reap benefits later. So when you get into your old age, if you do not invest in friendship now, when all the children are gone, so what are both of you going to be doing? Yep, yep, yep. You and so it. it's yeah. friendship, it's yeah. kindness, yeah. you know, that's going to keep that relationship going. Because, you know, all those hormones that are used to rage, right? Mm. At some point, at 70, hey. Mm. Mm. So... <laughs> These are some really, really deep, deep nuggets. And even me listening to you, I'm like, I got a lot of work to do. We all do. <laughs> it's a complete mind shift. But here's the thing. You talked about diesel. You have to buy diesel. Yeah. Life is hard. Mm. Nigeria is hard. Lagos is ridiculously hard. You're running a rat race. Where do you find the balance? That's one. And two, me, Pharaoh, I'm wired differently from my husband. How, how, do you, how do you bridge the gap between both parties being wired differently, you know, by DNA, and the fact that life is a rat race and you need to balance. Okay, so I'll take, you know, the second question first. How, you know, do you, you know, manage your differences? Simple. I say that the way you see the problem is the problem. The problem is really not the problem. It's your perception. Because perception creates your reality, right? If you see that we are different, right, then you will act different, right? And then it will become a problem. But if I see that I am incomplete and you are a gift to complete and complement me, then my relationship with you will be completely different. Right? Mm. Because if I am an introvert and you are an extrovert, yes. right, and I'm a deep introvert, that means I don't talk. That means that when we go out, I will just be sitting down like, and looking like glucose aid. But meanwhile, you are the one that, you know, um, um, starts the conversation. You are the person that brings light into the conversations. But when you open up those conversations, mm -hmm. I'm very intelligent and deep. And I get into those conversations, right? We can be there for hours. And mm -hmm. people will have a good time, mm -hmm. right? Talking to me, right? So what I'm supposed to do is to accept that you are not forward. You are just an extrovert that opens up conversations, that I go into those conversations, lean into them, and engage, right? While you wrap it up. Mm. But if I see you as different, I want to change you to be like me. If the whole world is like me, then who, is going in, who, who would initiate the conversation? That's mm. just an example, mm. right? So if I see you as a compliment, rather than someone that conflicts you know, the way that I am, then I will make the best use of our relationship and our difference, right? But, but let's now come back to, you know, the realities of life because, mm. you know, it's the reality of life. Mm. Whether it's you, whether it's me, whether it's somebody else, all of us have to sort out our needs. It's nothing new. We all live in Lagos. There's no, nothing new that Lagos has dropped as a bomb. We all know there's traffic. We all know you, know you have to get diesel or petrol. You all know you have to sort out your own security. It's a part of life, right? Yes. It's a part of our reality. So, you know, if I call Fenron and you start laughing and jumping and acting as if you're a, lu a lunatic, mm. right, then I'm wondering, are you okay? Mm. But if I call Ferra and you respond and you answer me normally, then I know that you're okay. Mm. So why are we responding to Lagos the way we are responding to Lagos? 
as if we do not know that this is Lagos. This is Lagos now, right? And Lagos will not change. It is the way it is, right? And so you've got to take that into consideration in everything that you do. If you want a peaceful life, move to another state where, you know what? If you leave your office at 5, you will get home at 5.05, mm. right? There's nobody that will disturb you. Mm. You don't need uh, a lot of the hustle that you get in Lagos. Mm. If that's the life you want, mm. you've got to relocate. Mm -hmm. But if you want to live in Lagos, you've got to take Lagos in, in what it has because that is the energy of Lagos, right? And you've got to look at your life holistically. You can't, life balance is an illusion in Lagos. Harmony is what you should seek for, which means that you look at your life holistically, right? And you prioritize per time. And you have the right conversations with the people that matter. So whether it's your wife, whether it's your family, right? You say, look, for this season, I'm going to be pursuing X, Y, Z, mm -hmm. right? I need your support. I am not going to be available as I'm required to be available. Mm. Please, how can you support me? We wish you have that conversation. Because at the end of the day, when I deliver, right, the whole house will we'll benefit dry. from it. I mean, yeah. say we want to go to yeah. the overs for yeah. summer, yeah. right? Yeah. I need to focus on this yeah. so that, you know, the nature of my work is I've got to put in the time yeah. so that I can reap the benefit so that we can go to the overseas, right? But you know what? Because I know that you know, we cannot pack all your needs, Yes. right? I will get back home at 9 p.m. I will shut down everything that I'm doing, knowing that I cannot finish everything that I want to finish in 24 hours. Yes. I still have tomorrow. So let me pack everything that I'm doing at 9 p.m. and then let me face family between 9 and 11 when I go to bed. Mm. I give time to my children. They go to bed at maybe mm. 9.30. <clears throat> so we all know that our ah, daddy and the children is 9 to 9.30. Yeah. Give them that quality time, right? Awesome. And then, you know, wife at 9.30 to 11, right? So you choose the days that you watch Telemundo together. <laughs> you choose the days you yeah. watch uh, Chelsea and Arsenal together. Yeah. You know, you choose the days that... So you basically, you plan. You, you if plan you to get to, harmony. If you fail to plan, you have already planned to fail. Very true. You know, Very in true. every aspect of your life, you plan. Yes. In every aspect of your life, you are conscious about the decisions that you are making, yes. right? Why do we leave this one to chance? Why do we feel that this one will work itself out? Very, very true. And on that note, I've just been told that we have two minutes left. Mm -hmm. And I want to quickly end by you giving us three important takeaways that can help us navigate through this thing called loving and respecting each other. All right. So, you know, life he, is bigger than love. Life is bigger than marriage, right? And so the first thing is you have to look at your life holistically and live life holistically because you only have one life. Second thing is you have to choose your life and you have to choose yourself and be kind to yourself, right? You have to love and respect yourself. And if you truly love and respect yourself, you will know that you need love and respect. And other people need love and respect. And so you also have to give love and respect, right? And also, realizing that no man is an island by himself, right? Part of life is family. Part of life is marriage, and, but it's not everyone that will marry. But if you choose to marry, then like you want to succeed in your career, if you want to succeed financially, also plan to succeed with your marriage. And success in that department, right, requires hard work, requires time, requires dedication, requires commitment, right? Pay the price. Include it with every other aspect of your life, right? There are principles of success. Find out what they are and apply them and you will, you know, succeed or you will be succeeding. And know, and know, right, that we're all work in progress.
No one is perfect. No one has it perfect. Don't compare yourself with anybody else <laughs> because they never tell you what is going on really in their marriage. You may actually have a better marriage than some people that you're looking up to. Wow. Focus on your focus and walk your path. Wow. Thank you so much. Thank you. This has been an honor, and it's gone by so, so quickly. Thank you. I really, really hope that, um, I know I've learned a lot. You know, I've literally been scribbling, and I can't wait to watch, I can't wait to watch this again. Thank you. You know, in the hope that it, it will create some, some very much needed shift in perspective. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Right. So next with us is Dolly Phillips, our fitness expert.